There's been a long controversy about how many migration waves did actually take place from the old world, from Siberia into the new world. It has also been highly debated um, what is the relationship between the different cultures that you actually identify in the Arctic because over a period of 5,000 years you see multiple distinct cultures and to what extent does this represent different people or to what extent does it represent the same people undergoing cultural changes. So this is the largest scale ancient genome project to date. I mean most ancient genome projects have basically been single genomes or a couple of genomes that has been analyzed in relation to contemporary data. But here we are talking about genome scale sequencing for multiple individuals, right? So, so that's, this also in that sense puts out a new bar for ancient uh, genome studies, which is significant higher than what we have seen so far. The largest challenge um, looking at the scale of the study was to basically um, um, explore the literature and be able to make a database of all the samples that exist um, everywhere, you know, um, basically throughout the world. So we've actually collected samples from um, the United States, uh, museums in Canada, in Denmark, and Greenland. Um, so obviously there's a lot of samples that exist um, and a lot of samples that have been coming out recently from uh, field excavations, but we needed to, to make sure to go out there and look for these samples and bring them together to our lab. Um, so I think that's the biggest challenge in terms of the scale. Um, but there's obviously also challenges on the technical level, technological level um, in the lab as well. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that, um, of course, being um, samples from the Arctic, um, it's obviously assumed that permafrost samples have better preservation of biomolecules. Um, so we would be able to retrieve DNA. Um, there'd be a lot of endogenous DNA content, et cetera. But that's not always true because we have to keep in mind a lot of these samples have been excavated decades uh, ago. You know, a lot of the samples have been excavated 50, 60 years ago, and they've been lying in museums, in basements. I guess there's like three main conclusions of the study. First of all, we can see that there has been a separate migration from the old world to the new world, separate from that of uh, the Inuit ancestors, the Thule culture, and, but also separate from that of Native Americans. And this is new, I mean, so, so it really shows we haven't uncovered the whole picture until now at least for the number of migrations from the old world to the new world. And this migration of the Paleo-Eskimos is most likely happening sometimes around five to 6,000 years ago, okay? So it's after Native Americans, but before the migration of the Thule culture. Secondly, we can see that all the different cultures that archeologists have identified in the Arctic prior to that of the Thule culture is actually represented by only one people, genetically speaking. It's the same people. It's a people who is distinct from other peoples in the new world. And it's a people who seems to be living in almost complete biological isolation for the, the 5, 000, almost 5,000 years where they rolled the Arctic. And this is also a big surprise to me. I mean, that you have a group of people living next door to Native Americans without, in, presumably without engaging with them. And I think the third interesting discovery we did was that the Paleo Eskimos actually disappears only 700 years ago. I mean, it's, it's very, very recent that a, an original people of the Arctic is completely vanishing, right? I mean, it's a people who have populated enormous areas, I mean, Alaska, Canada, Greenland, and they seem to be completely vanishing from the surface without leaving really any direct descendants in the new world today. There is a significance here in understanding how was the new world populated. This is a matter of really intensive scientific debate, okay? But additional to this, it's actually important to understand for even the living people, the living uh, indigenous people in the New World, the Inuits, the Native Americans, to understand what is the population history of these people and what has created the genetic makeup of these people. And this is important if you want to understand what is the disease risk, if you want to understand 
what kind of medical treatment will be most appropriate for these populations compared to other populations. So I think this study is really representing both something that is of genuine scientific interest, but also that has an element of, you can say, uh, uh, of importance to uh, society.